Hello, this is Super User. My name is Sawahudumu Matapeng. I'm a developer advocate for Linode, and in this video, I'm going to introduce you to object storage. In a previous video, we talked about databases, the different types of databases and what each one is optimal for. Databases are great when we want to store data that needs some kind of structure or needs to be updated frequently. However, not all the data in our application will actually need to be updated at all. So let's say we want to store images for every product in our online store, or we want to store PDF receipt for every purchase our users make. It may seem intuitive to store this data in our database or the server our application is running on. However, as our application scales, these solutions start becoming inefficient. This will slow down our database and make our entire application slow. A good solution for storing static data in our application is object storage. How object storage works is actually quite similar to the file storage system in our local machines. We have an object storage system and we store our data in this object storage system. We then expose each individual data as individual objects. In order for us to be able to add new data, update the data, or view the data, we then use API requests. We can also optionally add a unique URL to help us identify each data in our object storage system. So in the case of storing images, we would actually store all the images in an object storage system inside a folder called images. So in the case of our application, we would use these unique URLs to help us identify each image that belongs to a specific product. We then store the URL that belongs to that image in a database. We can already see that this will relieve a huge lift from our database or our server, depending on where we're initially storing the data. This means that as new products get added in, the images of those products don't actually speed down our application. It also means that as the quality of images in our application improve, it doesn't necessarily make a difference to the efficiency and the speed of our database. Now, there are many uses for object storage. It's not just limited to images or PDF files. You can store media files, YouTube files, YouTube videos that you've been working on. You can store your Excel documents, backups of your essay. You can literally store any type of data in object storage. My personal favorite use for object storage is to deploy static websites. Static websites are simply just files you view on the browser. And where do we store files? Our favorite place for storing files is object storage. So we can actually store HTML files and make them publicly accessible. And this will be our first simple application. I'm going to now show you how to deploy your first static site on the Linode object storage system in a matter of a few minutes. I'm at my desktop and I'm going to show you how to deploy your first static site on the Linode platform. The first thing you're going to need to do is follow the link in the description below to take you to the Linode website. And in this website, you'll actually get a voucher. So that's pretty cool. So remember to click the link in the description below to take you to the Linode website. I've already got my account, so I'm just going to log in. But if it's your first time, remember to just hit the sign up button. And after logging in, I've already told it to remember my machine. So it's just going to take me to cloud.linode.com. And this is the cloud manager where I'll be able to access all of Linode's products. Currently, we are looking for object storage. So I'm just going to go on the product list, just click on object storage, and it will take me to the object storage view. And here it's going to actually have a button that just simply asks me to add a bucket. And I'm just going to add a bucket and a bucket is what is the actual object storage that I'll be using to store my data. And I'm going to call this bucket static website. The region I'm going to choose is Newark. Um, you can just choose a region that's closer to you. It doesn't always make a huge difference. And then I'm going to click on submit and it's actually going to create my bucket for me, which is pretty awesome. But my bucket is still empty, so I need to actually add files. These are the files that will actually make my website. And to do that, I've already gone ahead and I have created a couple of files and put them in my computer. I've created an index.html, which is the actual HTML file. So I'm styling for it under my styles.css. And the image that I actually also want to use to make my website a little bit pretty. So we've got the files that we actually want to deploy. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these files and I'm going to actually add them to my bucket. And then I'm going to, so I'm going to browse files. And then after clicking on browse files, 
There are my files, index.phd, index.html, and styles.css. And I'm going to open that. And it's going to upload all my files to the bucket, which is pretty awesome. So just like that, I've actually created a bucket with files in it. And what I want to show is my index.html. I'm going to go to click on the kebab and then details. And now I can click on the actual link. It's created a link for me. And there it is, the big access denied. The reason for this is because for security reasons, everything in our buckets by default is private because we don't always want to share the information we store in our buckets. Sometimes you want to store sensitive information. However, this is a publicly accessible website and we do want people to be actually able to view our site. So what we are then going to do is we're going to actually make these files publicly accessible. We can't do this on the cloud manager as of yet, so we're going to do it on the terminal, which is going to be super fun. I'm going to show you how to do it. And the first thing we're going to need to do is to actually open up a terminal. Got a fresh new one over here. First thing I'm going to need to install is I'm going to need to install the Linode CLI, which is the Linode command line interface, which will allow me to run uh, Linode commands as if I'm actually on the dashboard. And the second thing we're going to need to do is to install Boto. Boto is the package that will allow us to manipulate buckets on the command line. So then we're going to go pip3 install Linode dash CLI. If you do struggle with some of the commands and you maybe don't really know which command works for what, here's a quick pro tip. I just like to go to Linode documentation and they have written some incredibly amazing documentation for all their products and it's very user friendly and I really enjoyed it. Like for this tutorial to prepare, I used documentation from this. So this is really awesome, like congrats to the Node team on well-written documentation. Now I'm going to just go back to my terminal. I've now installed the Linode CLI, just like that. It was quite easy. And the next thing we're going to need is Boto. So pip3 install Boto. Okay, cool, awesome. Now we've installed Boto. So we've got Boto now. So we've got to the CLI and we've got Boto, which means that we can do stuff on Linode and we can manipulate buckets on our terminal. Next command we're gonna need to run is to configure Linode because we want Linode on the web to know that the Linode that is in this terminal is sunshine in my code. And then for that, we're gonna type Linode-CLI config and what will it will ask me is to insert a personal access token and it's actually really helpful in that it also gives me the link to go to follow if i do want to access my personal access token and then i'm just going to copy this link and paste it on the new in a new window and then enter there we go. And now it's actually just taking me straight to that view. You can just use that link or if you want to know how to do it from, you know, let's say we're viewing buckets and you want to know how to do it. You just click on your profile and my click on my profile and you'll see a few options to edit your profile. And what we are looking for is an API token. And this will take you to that link that they shared with us on the terminal. And then I'm going to add a personal access token. I'm going to call this token my Linux machine. And it will expire in six months. I'm cool with that. And this, then you get to choose the product you want access for. We want for ob object storage and we want to be able to read or write because we are going to be changing the access rights for our object storage. Also, you don't just have to choose object storage. You want to open yourself to be able to explore all the products. So I'm just going to click on select all and then I'm going to create a token. And then it's going to give me a token, which is a password essentially. So you don't want to share this token with anyone. And once you click on OK, you won't be able to see the token again. So you want to make sure that you store it in a safe place. You can store it in LastPass. That's a good option. 
and then I'm gonna go back to my terminal and I'm gonna enter this token over here I'm gonna paste my token over here and now it says configuring for Sunshine in my code, which means the Linode on my terminal and the Linode on my web know who I'm talking to. And then it's going to ask me to choose a region, right? When it comes to choosing a region, I prefer to just, okay, I'm going to click on OK and close this view. And then I'll go to object storage and I'll just look at the region I use to create a product. So I've got US East 1 over here. So I'm just going to go back to my terminal and... Yeah, choose US East, which is option six, enter. And then it's going to ask me for some other stuff that's related to Linux. I'm going to enter, enter, because it's all optional. Now, the next thing you want to do now is that we've got ourselves configured. So essentially, we've logged into the terminal as the user on the web. Now I'm going to type the first command, which is linode-cli obj which is the object storage product and then i'm going to type la which will list my buckets and the uh the data in my buckets which is pretty awesome if you do again get lost with the command remember to check out the documentation on the cli and all the products really helpful oh, now it's saying error no default cluster is configured and my options are US East 1, and I'm going to choose that one because that is the cluster I'm using for my buckets. And I'm going to choose option 1, enter. And now, what it's actually telling me, which is pretty awesome, is that it has written a config file to this URL. So I can actually view my config file, such as Control Shift Tab. So open a new tab on the terminal. And I can just cat and then paste that URL that it's given me over here, enter. And I can actually see my config details. So if you ever have security issues, just remember to check this file and you can maybe manually update your token and your access keys and change your region if you would like. But for now, we just want to make these three files publicly accessible. So the command for that is linode-cli obj, which is the object storage. And I want to set the ACL for each of these files. And I'm going to dash dash ACL dash public, public, which means I want them to be publicly accessible. And then the next um, command, the next word is the name of the object storage. So I'm going to, it's called static website followed and by the name of the file the first file i'm going to go for is index.html because that's just how they appear over here and then it's gonna say acl updated which means that it's successfully made this file publicly accessible i can then do the same thing for index.png Awesome, this is going well. And then the next, the last file is styles.css. So it really helps to do that initial object LA, which will actually allow me to see all the files. And I can see that this is what I need to update. And now I can go back to my browser and refresh this link. So this should now be publicly accessible which is great you see my image is there and the file is there and it's got some pretty cool stuff and just for bonus it's got a link to the object storage style guide and now i'm actually gonna go back to my cloud manager and i want to now view that image i made publicly accessible and i'm gonna go click on details click on this so this is the added bonus, which is that you can actually also use this to publicly um, share your images. So if you want to share an image with people on the Internet, this is a really cool way to just be able to allow those people to see them. It's really great for file sharing with anyone. 
And that is it. That is how easy it is to deploy your first static website on the Linode platform. I do hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, remember to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to this channel so that you can continue seeing more amazing content from us, from myself, Suwakudumu Madlapeng, and the Linode team. We'll see you in the next video.